the, the argument that is typically made by gender theorists is that gender is entirely separate from sex. Okay, this is another thing that I have gone over time and time again, and that is there are two words there for a reason, okay? Sex and gender are entirely different words, and they refer to different things. They have different etymological roots in the whole works. Initially, gender referred only to um, uh, language and linguistics, and uh, particularly in the French, where they have this strange tendency to need to attribute uh, feminine or masculine uh, to in inanimate objects, like a, a ship will be uh, feminine, right? It's not actually a female, but, uh, you know, it's the, the whole le and la, and I, it's been years since I took French, so I uh, don't have it straight in my head, but it started in linguistics and stuff. But if you look at the uh, etymology of the two words, sex comes from uh, the Latin sexus, which basically refers to biological sex, male and female, whereas gender uh, comes from, I believe it is uh, genus uh, in, in the Latin, which is basically a type. Okay, so it's a typing, it's like the, the word um, genre in movies. So horror, science fiction, drama, comedies, different genres, okay? Genre, gender. We're talking about a classification system. Gender refers not to biological sex, okay? It's a separate thing. So here's where Ben Shapiro is immediately wrong. Gender is a separate thing that refers to uh, forms of dress, uh, social expectations and different things that are associated with a particular sex, in some cases expected of a particular sex, um, in terms of, like I say, dress and stuff. So uh, in traditional gender roles in North America, I shouldn't be wearing a skirt. I shouldn't be wearing makeup, all of this stuff, because that's outside of my assigned gender. But gender is something that's in the mind, and it's something that changes from time to time and place to place. It used to be quite common for, for uh, men to wear, you know, long, what are essentially dresses or tunics, and, but not anymore. So things change, and roles change over time. Uh, and particularly the feminist community knew that, there, that it was necessary to separate biological sex from the expectations that are put upon a sex and uh, how people sort of process what it is to be that sex psychologically. Okay, so gender is mind and sex is body. Now, um, the right likes to, to say there are only two genders. Okay, that is a fundamental misunderstanding of the word and, and uh, how the word should be used. I know that people use it that way in the vernacular and maybe in the, uh, the pubs and bars and, and streets and stuff, people use it that way, but that is an incorrect usage of the word. And at this point in history, it's very important if we want to solve this whole transgender debate in a fair way, one of the first things we need to do, as Voltaire used to say, is start by defining our terms, okay? And making sure we understand that those two words refer to separate things and separate sort of manifestations uh, in the world and gender and what constitutes gender, say the masculine gender or the feminine gender will vary from, um, you know, country to country. But um, if you say there's only two genders, again, because it varies, your, your sort of thesis is already breaking down there. Right. As the expectations vary from culture to culture, it's already breaking down. But the thing is, is that if sex and um, gender um, can mean the same thing and can be a synonym, this is how and why the other side on the left is able to say that trans women are women. OK, it is that conflation of those two words that allows that to happen. And it also feeds this grand misunderstanding that is going on out there. And it's all got to do with the language being muddied. And uh, when you look at what they're doing in school, so people know that I'm sort of a, a long time um, critic of the Sochi 123 uh, program in terms of what they're doing with kids' minds uh, in, uh, you know, with their um, transgender uh, materials and stuff. But one of the things that they are doing there that I used to talk about in my public talks is that they are deliberately conflating 
those two words. Okay. So they have what they call a gender line, right? And this is this exercise that they use in classrooms where they draw a, a, a line on a whiteboard or a chalkboard. And um, it's supposed to represent a gender spectrum. Now, gender is a spectrum. Sex is not a spectrum. Gender clearly is, and we'll get into that. But the point is they draw this line on the board in schools to represent the gradation from masculine to feminine. The problem is in these gender lines, uh, they immediately conflate sex and gender because instead of on one side having masculine, they have male. Okay, and on the other side, instead of having feminine, they have female. Okay, but male and female are not gender references. Okay, those are sex references. So they are conflating the two terms in the minds of very young children, and this is contributing to what's going on. So if I could get into um, school programs, one of the first things I would do is scrap that whole uh, gender uh, line. Um, or at least correct it so is that on the one side it says masculine and the other side it says feminine instead of this conflation of the two words.